This is a form of biology 223 genetics. Uh, previously, I had done um, a video on the recombinant uh, pedigree, um, part F there in red. Uh, sorry for the mess. I'm gonna, it's maybe good for me to do two or three other problems here on top of this so you can see how to, how to manage an exam and different colored pens as, or different colored pencils is a very good approach. So uh, I have several videos on uh, I have a video on recombinant pedigrees and uh, several videos on how to do this style of pedigree. And um, another very common sort of analysis of pedigrees, uh, maybe more traditional, um, that's covered in the book is the case where um, we know about somebody's phenotype uh, and then we determine what the likelihood of someone else is. So that's um, here part um, F. Uh, it looks like we have two, two, two Fs here. Uh, these questions here. So I'll have to call that um, GH. That should be GHI. Okay. Um, considering generation five yet to be born, so therefore not phenotyped, and generations one through five to be phenotyped for the -link, unlinked traits P, Q, and R, where P is X-linked, recessive trait, and Q are recessive autosomal traits, what is the probability of individual 6, 1 being a carrier of P? So I'm just going to draw that as a per single purple line, being a carrier, and I put cross there, that would be homozygous. Here, this is then only be heterozygous, where only individual uh, 5, 3, uh, 5, 3 has shown the trait. He's male. This is P is X linked. So that means uh, X-linked, so that means he's hemizygous. So to display the trait, he only need be um, inherited this from one person, which would be presumably his mother. So therefore, nobody else has uh, shown the trait, so he must have inherited from his mother, not from his father, and from her mother, and her mother, so those people must be. And now the question is, what's the likelihood that he passes that on to on to, uh, to, his, to his niece, that his niece would be a carrier. So we could say that if he has it, he got it, he received it from his mother, and if she, his, so if the niece's grandmother had it, now this is Drosophila, but I'm gonna refer to this as this person, people, because it's not really indicated here, okay? It's Drosophila, it doesn't matter, it's just convenient. Um, then there's a half chance, there's a half chance that this was passed on to the daughter, and if her daughter were a carrier, uh, another half chance uh, passed on to it. So that's simply one half times one half. That's a simple answer. Um, no funny business. Um, let's do um, the next one, and uh, this is trait Q. So Q is autosomal, recessive autosomal, and displaying trait, so that means homozygous, recessive, Q, 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 where only 5, 1, that would be him, displays a trait, and it's autosomal recessive, so to display the trait, he has to be homozygous recessive. So if he's homozygous recessive, both of his parents must be carriers. And if they're carriers, then the question is, what's the chance of his brother being that, and this is where we can say, well, let's imagine uh, the parents there are, are wild type, are heterozygous, so they have two possibilities. Both parents are this, heterozygous, therefore he has uh, one chance of being homozygous wild type for two chances of being heterozygous and to one chance of being homozygous recessive. We're told he's not homozygous recessive and that everyone's been phenotyped. Okay, in a real clinical setting, you wouldn't rely upon that without, this is, this is the first approximation. First, let's do this analysis and then worry about um, the, whether the trait is absolutely Mendelian with 100% penetrance if the clinical, if the, if the pedigree is well established, but so this is, in real situations, one wants to be 
especially careful if any medical decisions are being based upon this, but this is to illustrate the analysis. So we know he's not, he's not that. He can't be that, right? That's not, that's not the case. So there's, we'll exclude that. So there are two chances out of three that he's a carrier, one chance out of three that he is homozygous wild type, and we're discounting the chance that he shows a trait because we're told that he hasn't shown the trait. So we're going to say there's a two-thirds chance that he is a carrier, and then the chance that he passes it to his daughter is a one-half chance, and then a one-half chance, and then a one-half chance. So we end up with here from her, from the father, well, there's a one out of one chance. He's homozygous recessive. She must inherit the allele from, from her father, and the chance from the mother's side is going to be that two-thirds, uh, that two-thirds, so let me do that, times one-half times one-half, and if she has it, another one-half. So two-thirds times one-half times one-half times one-half. Okay, so that's, that's, that's fine. Um, let's do the uh, next one, which is actually, um, you will notice some similarity. To, the, to this one, uh, so H, where she is displaying trait R, so that she is this, so R, R, where only, th only three, one, that's him, has shown the trait. So he is, um, he is this, R, R. So if he's R, R, like for, for Q, uh, each parent must be capable of regenerating only one kind of, uh, sorry, must be carriers. They must be uh, carriers for R. They're plus R, plus R. I could put one slash through them. And so if he's, uh, if he is um, displaying the trait, then his parents are carriers, and then individual 5-1 has likewise a two-thirds chance of being a carrier. I'm just going to do it that way. Uh, two-thirds chance of being plus R, and if he has it, then there's a certain chance of one that his daughter has it, and then there's a half chance times a half chance. So from the, let's do it from, from the father's side, there's going to be a two-thirds chance, and if he is a carrier, a half chance, there's going to be two-thirds uh, times one-half, and from the uh, mother's side, there's going to be then they're both care. We know that he has it, so there's a one ch chance of one times one half times one half. And we see that the final then is two thirds times one half times one half times one half. And that's the same answer as for Q. Uh, so we shouldn't be too surprised because they're brothers, and even though the pedigree is asymmetric with respect to them, and there's two generations extra, or an extra generation inserted here, nonetheless, it's not too surprising. So the, the twist here is the two-thirds. There are some other twists in these kind of problems that don't show up here with this consanguinity that's more severe, where you could imagine that, um, uh, for example, if it's... Uh, if there's, um, this in the, let's say, the earlier one, we have this individual and it can be inherited in multiple ways. It can get a little tricky and the methods that's used for the recombinant pedigree up here will work for these. So what might be an interesting thing to do is to do these problems the way I do it here with the independent probabilities of slashes or with this kind of approach where we keep track of allele frequencies and let's say um, gamete frequencies and possibilities. So there's multiple ways to do it and which one is efficient and least likely um, to lead to mistake depends on um, consanguinity and this kind of uh, issue. This show, this is really illustrates the, the, the only trick that shows up in these kind of pedigrees, but it may not always be obvious. I will stop here.